To those that you are viewing this on YouTube on the recording, I'll actually put the link to that video underneath so that you know that what we're talking about, so you don't feel left out. I have to say custard is one of my favorite sweets, you know, forget the pudding altogether and just give me the custard. And one of the, the great unsung heroes of the 1800s was Mr. Alfred Bird, the good old Brummy from down the road who uh, invented baking powder and more importantly, because his wife was allergic to eggs, uh, egg-free custard powder. And you may have seen the, the, the custard factory down in uh, Digbeth, which was the factory where he made it. Well, for some strange reason or so over the last 10 years, I, I've developed an allergy to eggs, something, you know, that was really strange to me. So I, for one, can't thank Mr. Bird enough for his wonderful invention that uh, still allows me to eat custard. Well, what's got this got to do with uh, our reading, you may ask? And uh, I might reply, not as much as some people might claim and think. You see, people have come up with some pretty wacky ideas and so, so wild ideas and theories to explain how Jesus actually walked on the waters. Things like the mud was stirred up to become uh, a non-Newtonian fluid like the custard or the wind uh, blew between the hills to create a funnel effect and, uh, and made the water extra dense. Or Jesus was actually walking on the shore or on a sandbar. I'm sure you've heard them all at some time or other. But they all have one thing in common, and that is that they spectacularly miss the point of the story. Because you know, this story isn't about the what's and the how's at all. This story isn't about the, the science or the mechanics. No, this story is all about Jesus. This story is all about his, his power and our need to put our confidence and, and faith in him and his authority over all things. When I read this uh, Bible passage again, the first thing that struck me was that the, the boat, we're told, was a considerable distance from the, the shore, and the going was rough because the, the wind and the waves was against it. They were too far out to go back, but going on was going to be a, a real struggle because of the wind and waves. Last week, I, I was chatting to someone who said that in these strange and difficult days, they felt all at sea. They said with the uncertainty over the relaxation of lockdown and the, the talk of a third wave and whichever way they looked, all they could see was doom and gloom and they were really depressed about it. All they could see around them was fear and uncertainty. A feeling that I think in these days, most of us can empathize with. But you know, just as Jesus walked out to the disciples through the stormy waters, here today, Jesus is doing the same. He's then standing in the distance, waving, saying, I'm over here. He isn't waiting for us to, to reach dry land. No, Jesus has come out to us in the very heart of our troubles, to stand alongside us, to comfort us, to calm us, to give us courage to see the journey through. Over the last few years, my wife Jane and I have had, well, I would say more than our fair share of uh, difficult and challenging times with health and family and so on. But the one thing I've learned with absolute certainty throughout all of it is that whenever in life we find ourselves in trouble and difficult waters, if we look, we will see Jesus coming to meet us there. He's holding out his hand, saying to us, just as he did to the disciples, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. I sometimes think it's strange, but actually wonderful that it's often in our darkest moments that we feel the presence of Jesus in our lives the strongest. It's often when we need him most that we see his hand held out to us most clearly. 
And this brings me on to the second thing that struck me from this reading. Jesus invited Peter to come to him in the middle of the storm. He didn't calm the, the waves and the wind down first. He simply said, come. It was in the chaos of the wind and the waves that Peter had to accept Jesus' invitation. Have faith. Have courage. Step out to take Jesus' hand. Now, I think that is a good lesson for all of us today. Because as Christians, we're not exempt from life's problems. We're not immune to the world throwing us the, the odd curveball. But through it all, the one thing we can rely on, the one thing that we can have confidence in, is that Jesus is there, holding out his hand, saying, come, take courage, do not be afraid. But the important thing there, though, is that we have to be like Peter. We have to put our trust in Jesus as he holds his hand out to us. We have to step out in faith and take it. We need to trust that God is in charge. Trust that he is the one who is all-powerful. Don't keep telling God how big the waves are. Tell the waves how big our God is. Let them know who's really in charge. Take Jesus' hand. Have courage. Trust him. Have faith in him. The third thing that struck me is that as Peter walked on the water to meet Jesus, it was only when he became distracted by the wind and the waves that he began to sink. As he looked at them, he became afraid and he, he took his eyes off Jesus and his fear began to focus on the chaos all around him. Now, fear is an odd thing, isn't it? Because many fears are actually understandable and, and can be good. Because fear of being burned stops me putting my hand in the fire. Fear of me catching COVID stops me going out into the crowds in Wolverhampton without wearing a mask. This type of fear is good in that it keeps us from danger and keeps us from acting recklessly. But fear that causes us to doubt Jesus, fear that causes us to lose faith in his words is very different. What happened to Peter is that as he saw the waves and the wind, he began to doubt Jesus' power over them. They became the sole object of his attention and the, the biggest thing in his life. His focus on Jesus began to wander and his faith faltered and he began to sink. Well, you know, we've, we've had, haven't we, so quite a, a long and difficult time and who knows how much longer it will be till we see the end of it. But we need to learn to Peter in these times. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Though for many the main storm may be passing, we're not in the calm yet. And what is important is that our trials and fears don't become the, the biggest things in our lives. What is important is that Jesus is unimaginably more powerful than a virus or any other problem we find around us. What is important is if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. If we reach out for his hand and not get distracted, he will walk with us through the wind and the waves in safety. <coughs> And you know, if like Peter, we have a, a wobble or a doubt, take comfort that Jesus didn't let Peter sink. He wasn't drowned or lost. In spite of fear and doubt getting the better of Peter, Jesus still held him close. And together with the waves and the wind crashing around them, they walked back to the calm of the boat. And don't forget, Peter was not just safe and secure when he reached the boat. But in every step along the way, he was guided by the safe hands of Jesus. So take his hand. Listen to Jesus. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Amen.